Somebody ate her for walking out when my sister-in-law stole my pregnancy announcement. Me and my sister-in-law aren't close, but we get along fine. Everyone says she's gorgeous, classy, and chic. She's from a rich family. She's the youngest, and she's spoiled rotten. I'm 35 years old. Struggled with fertility for six years, but I'm finally pregnant. Everyone thought I won't be able to have kids, and they didn't know about the happy news. I decided to have dinner to announce. I had a few days before leaving town for my new job, and Friday was perfect since the whole family would get together for dinner. Only my brother and his wife knew. We gather on Friday. I was planning to make the announcement after dinner. I got up from my seat to go get something from the kitchen. Suddenly, sister-in-law saw me standing up. She immediately stood up, took my brother's hand, and smiled at everyone, saying she had something important to tell them. I was confused. I sat back down, and my husband kept whispering, asking if she was really going to make the announcement for us. I mean, that was weird. My cousin was recording when my sister-in-law announced that she was pregnant. Me and my husband froze in our seats, shocked. At this point, I had no idea she was pregnant. My brother kept asking her, and she got so dramatic, tearing up and placing his hand on her belly, telling my mom she's gonna be a grandma. Those were like magic words. Mom ran to hug her, already welcoming her first grandbaby, as they call it now officially. I just, my husband and I remained seated. I was so mad it showed. My uncle kept smirking, mocking us for looking jealous since we didn't get up to congratulate my sister-in-law. I just got up and loudly told my sister-in-law what she did was unacceptable, as I made efforts for this dinner. My mom called me disrespectful for behaving like that and not congratulating my sister-in-law. I told her I was intending on announcing my pregnancy after dinner, but mom didn't believe me, saying she couldn't believe I was feeling so jealous of my sister-in-law to the point of lying and saying I'm pregnant. That was it for me. I raised my voice at them, then walked out with my husband. My last chance to make my announcement with my family was ruined. I left town, but my family kept saying I shouldn't have left and ruined sister-in-law's excitement. Mom acted like what I told her about my pregnancy was a lie, and still insisted I call my brother and sister-in-law to apologize for making a scene. Yes, my brother, the only brother I have, and his wife knew that I was pregnant, knew that I was planning on making the announcement on Friday after dinner, and knew how long I waited for this moment. It might sound dramatic, but to have this happen after waiting for years is cruel in my opinion. I'm hurt my mom called me a liar to my face and in front of everybody. My husband said we should clear the air and explain to mom since she didn't know, but I'm not ready to see her right now. Also, there's no response from my brother, not a word from him. He acted like my husband and I weren't even there at dinner. Now for the top comments. Feeling so jealous of my sister-in-law to the point of lying and saying I'm pregnant. Excuse me? No, nope, not happening. I no longer have a family after this dinner. Not day hall. Same. Like, Opie's mother's reaction is literally unforgivable to me. I'm petty, so I would literally cut contact, send one newborn photo when the time comes, then block them permanently. Oh, absolutely. I'm lying and faking a pregnancy? Then enjoy not having a relationship with your fake grandchild. Not day hall. So, sister-in-law waited until you stood up, and then quickly cut you off to make her own announcement. That is crappy behavior, and if she knew how long you guys have been trying for a baby, it makes it even crappier. Way to make your wonderful news about yourself. I'm also shocked that your uncle would laugh at you and your mother would assume you are lying. I don't know any background details, but your family sounds pretty toxic. I hope your husband's family is loving and welcoming, because it sounds like your little one will need to be shielded from your family's nonsense. I think that baby announcements should be received with congratulations, but grown adults should know better than to upstage someone else's celebration with their own news. This would be like interrupting an engagement announcement with their own. Utterly inexcusable, rude, and narcissistic. And to enable that behavior, especially knowing the heartache of infertility, means your family doesn't deserve you. I'm guessing this isn't the first time they've favored your brother and been horrible to you. I wish you all the best, and congrats on your baby. The brother didn't know, apparently, and isn't talking to Opie. This smells fishy. Ten bucks says her pregnancy is fake, and she'll conveniently miscarry in the next few months. Brother knows and won't talk to Opie about it because of guilt. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for celebrating my birthday? Hello, everyone. I'm 13 female. 
I was born in a very poor country. My mom didn't have great prenatal care, so she didn't know she was having twins until my brother and I were born. She had just wanted a boy. My brother died when he was only a few hours old, and my mom got really depressed after that. Because of my brother's death, we never celebrated my birthday, because it was supposed to be a day of family mourning. My family will have small celebrations for me on other days, usually just going out for ice cream or other small things. My mom never joined in or anything no matter when we had them. We、we'll、live in the United States now, and birthdays are a way bigger deal here than they were back at my old country. We moved here when I was seven, and ever since then, I've always wanted a birthday party with balloons and cake and streamers and everything like that. But my mom has always said no because she says I'm being disrespectful to my brother. Where I live, you're allowed to have parties up to 25 inside, 100 outside. All of my friends were having small parties to celebrate turning into teenagers. Dad felt really left out that I wasn't going to get a party. I tried to ask my parents again, and they said no. My mom said no, and that I was disrespectful for asking. And my dad told me to listen to my mom. I know that it's not right to be dishonest, but I just really wanted to experience that feeling of having a whole party just for you. So I saved up all of my money for my weekend job and bought a cake and decorations and invitations. My friend's family owns a restaurant, and they agreed to let me use the back room. On my birthday, I spent the morning grieving with my parents, and then told them I had to go to a friend's house for a school project. I had my birthday party, and it was the most amazing time I had ever had in my life. Twenty of my friends came, and they all got me gifts and sang to me. There was music and dancing, and it was amazing. My parents found out though. Because one of my friend's parents mentioned to my mom when she saw her at the supermarket the next day, what a great time my friend had during my party. My mom came home and freaked out. She called me disrespectful, disgraceful, and basically said that she wished my brother had made it instead of me. I'm not allowed to hang out with my friends or go on any electronics except for schoolwork. I can use the family computer in the living room so she can see what I'm doing. I'm writing this on a computer in the school's library. I don't think my mom would be as mad if I had a party another day, and not on my actual birthday. That's the only thing I feel bad about. I could have had it the day after my birthday instead of the day off and spent the day with my family. I just hate spending every single birthday sitting in the dark and not talking or eating while we mourn my brother. I just want one year to celebrate. Am I the a-hole? Obi, you are not the a-hole. I can't believe you're only 13 and having to live like this. You are not disrespecting your dead brother. Living your life while he is dead is never disrespectful. What is disrespectful is your mother saying that your own life disrespected your brother because she wanted that boy and it died. Maybe it's just me, but this seems like a sort of life lesson she should have learned, but she didn't. Life isn't fair, but you live with what you have, and you appreciate it because you didn't even have to get that. You are not entitled to anything life gives you, and I think a lot of people forget that because they want to feel like they have some control in their lives. Celebrate your birthday, live your life the way you want to. Your mom has created what was supposed to be your happy day into a day of sorrow. Don't let her. It also really irks me that Opie's mother basically said that she wished her brother made it rather than her. That's so messed up. Not day home. Just because your brother died should not mean you are not allowed to live. If anything, they should celebrate your life more. That is in no way disrespectful towards your brother. Not today, Hall. Your parents are using their grief as an excuse to shortchange you. They need a therapist, not a yearly ritual that deprives you of joy for the sake of their late son. Next story is titled, "Am I a Hall for kicking my brother-in-law out of my wedding when he brought his dog with him?" Me and my husband got married a week ago. Not everything went quite as we planned. The reason is my brother-in-law, Jack, 21. He is the youngest in the family. Extremely well cared for, and everyone spoils him all the time. For some reason, he doesn't like me. Always been passive aggressive towards me and made awful remarks about me on several occasions. Jack has a German Shepherd, a really big boy that he adores and takes everywhere. I gotta say, his dog is very active and quite big. He wanted us to include his dog in the wedding invitation we sent him. His mom told me that. I told her that he can't bring his dog, and she acted confused, asking why. Then said Jack and his dog always attend events together, and that Jack didn't appreciate how disrespectful it was towards his dog. I have no hate for dogs, 
I have a chihuahua that I got three years ago. But even she, bless her, cannot be around Jack's moody dog. I insisted no dogs allowed, and it caused some disagreements, but I thought we had them solved. At the wedding, Jack showed up with his dog and wearing a t-shirt with the words Dog Dad on it. I was shocked when I saw them. The saddest dog at the table my family was sitting at. Mother-in-law was smiling widely. His dog was running around ruining everything, causing loud noise and making guests uncomfortable. I swear I'm not exaggerating. Some of my dearest, nearest friends were leaving. I had enough after all people were feeling terrified slash uneasy with the dogs acting out. I told Jack he needed to take his dog elsewhere so someone else can stay with him. Jack refused and argued with me, so I told him to leave. Mother-in-law kept calling me unreasonable for telling her son to leave. She said I was the one ruining my own wedding and I needed to calm down and let Jack enjoy his brother's wedding. My husband just stood there, hands in his pockets, saying he should have eloped if that's how everyone was behaving at the wedding. I put my foot down and asked him to leave. He kept arguing with me, but then took his dog and left. The family were upset, saying I shouldn't have taken away Jack's excitement to share his brother's joy on his big day. His mother was extremely agitated and said I overreacted. That I just made it personal and was acting like a bridezilla kicking an innocent dog and her son out of the wedding. I already made it clear, but Jack was being mean trying to go against my wishes. But still, I'm the one at fault for kicking him out instead of figuring out a solution. The wedding was at my brother's house. Now for the top comments. Not Day Hall. You made it clear from the beginning that the dog was not to attend and your mother-in-law and brother-in-law willfully ignored you. From its behavior, this was clearly not a trained service animal, but a badly trained pet which has no place at a formal event like a wedding, especially when the owner wasn't specifically told to bring the animal. Edit. Also, where was your new husband in all of this, and why was he not backing you up? You better buckle up because it looks like you just married into a really fun family. Opie said he just stood there, saying they should have eloped. I read that, but was trying to make a point to Opie that her new spouse was not standing by her, as a new spouse should. Not day hall. If husband just stood there, I'd be going for an annulment. Good luck with that family. He'll need it. Not day hall. What is it with people monopolizing someone else's wedding and then blaming the bride slash groom for ruining it? This clearly wasn't a service dog, and mother-in-law's crap-eating grin shows that they didn't plan to listen to you from the get-out, and they're quite proud of their stupid selves. Now for the last story. Am I a hull for excluding my mom from baby shower until she sincerely apologizes to my husband for how she's been about him not being present at our last birth? My daughter was born over a year and a half ago. A couple of months before I was due, my husband experienced something very traumatic that I'd rather not say here. Soon after, he was experiencing some severe panic attacks that sometimes came out of nowhere, but usually triggered by any sort of stress. He was so worried about how he'd be during our daughter's birth, and I decided maybe it was better if he wasn't present. We were still waiting for him to get approval for a therapist, and his panic attacks would get really bad. Being in the delivery room didn't feel like the best choice. My husband agreed. He felt so awful about it, but I knew this wasn't his fault. My sister was there instead and he stayed in the waiting room with his family who helped him when his anxiety would spike. The delivery went well, and my husband finally got the help he desperately needed. My mom was the only one who seemed to have a problem with the fact that he wasn't with me doing his job as a husband slash father by supporting me. She knew about the anxiety problem why it was happening, and why he hadn't been able to get help yet. But she felt like he should have sucked it up and been there for me. I put my foot down a few times when she went directly to him and made him feel bad for failing his first task as a father. She'd apologize. My husband would forgive her and decide to give her another chance. We didn't see much of anyone after because of COVID. And then we were busy with my daughter, so didn't talk to her much either. We found out months ago we're pregnant with our second child. And my husband is ecstatic. I'm too. We were talking to my parents on Zoom and my mom asked if he's actually gonna be there this time or is he gonna flip out again and decide to miss the birth of his baby. My husband got silent afterwards and he was very serious. That's a sore subject for him because he still feels extremely guilty. Despite being such a caring and devoted father to our girl. I got so mad at my mom. 
This time, she doesn't want to apologize because it was just a simple, valid question. But it's the way that she said it. He manages his anxiety very well thanks to his lovely therapist. And hasn't suffered an episode like that in a long time, even in very stressful situations. We've had a few of those last year. She knows all this, so I know her question was just to make a jab at him. I've been refusing all contact and said she's not welcome to my baby shower until she sincerely apologizes to him. Because she refused, we haven't talked at all and she's still uninvited. Some are not happy we're taking this route. My husband is on the same boat. They feel she has a right to be concerned for me and I shouldn't be keeping her from our family. It's kind of been wearing me down, so I'd like to know what others might think about this. Not day Hall. She's lucky you're even giving her a chance to make good. Can I just say your husband is such a nobleman? Giving up being in the delivery room for the birth of his child for the good of everyone at the time is such an honorable thing to do. It must have been one of the hardest decisions to make. Hats off to this man. It killed him honestly. This was our first child and he was so excited about being there to witness her birth. What happened to him wasn't his fault. Sometimes he acts like it was. So this was very hard on him that he couldn't be there because of the attacks. This time, we know it's gonna be different. Doing what he did to allow his child's birth to be as smooth and calm as possible is incredibly selfless and clearly the act of an amazing husband and father. From one father to another, this man has my utmost respect. Also, please pass this pro tip to him. Make sure to give her your non-dominant hand to squeeze pal. Thank me later. Not day Hull. If this is genuine concern for you, she's expressing it in a rude, cruel and paternalistic way. You're an adult. You've picked your partner. You've talked this issue through. You let her know multiple times that you're fine with it. By this point, she has to respect that, even if she disagrees. I'm not even sure this is protectiveness, because if it were that, this would be a very unproductive way to try to help. Maybe she's trying to bully him into going out of a concern for you, but I don't see in what world would that solve more problems in your marriage than it would create. Especially given that he's going this time and that she already knows it. It's just completely unnecessary. So to me, it honestly reads more as unnecessary cruel and abusive remarks than mama bear mode. That's the way I see it too. My husband has learned healthy ways to cope with his trauma. He manages his anxiety well, so obviously he's going to be there this time. It was just so unnecessary to bring this up again. 